My favorite city? Well, I live in Washington, D.C., but I have to say it's not my favorite city <laughs> um, just because it's so steeped in the broken politics of America these days. I have to say I've, I've, uh, I love the, the metropolises of Canada and Europe. They just fast. I mean, Toronto, 50% foreign-born. Isn't that amazing? I mean, London. I used to go to London in the 70s when I was a student, and it was basically all white with a few... Afro-Caribbeans. Now it's one of the most diverse and dynamic cities in the world where you used to laugh you couldn't get a good meal, now you can get a good meal from all over the world in London. Paris, with all of the troubles they're having just to see it diversifying and struggling with it, I love it. Brussels is such a fascinating city. It, on and on, I have to say, I just think that migration is a gift to these cities and countries that think, oh, how do we stop it and reject it because it's unfamiliar to us and scary, are missing out on the opportunity. And I think that hopefully America and Europe will follow Canada uh, in having a more intentional policy of saying, wait a minute, this is part of our national development. Let's make it work for immigrants, for the, the general population, because at the end of the day, these are not the other. They are us. And that's the breakthrough, I think, that we're going to have to achieve in the next generation to really succeed with immigration. So an inclusive, an inclusive concept of uh, right. I mean, it's it. But people say, well, are you going to be generous or are you going to be orderly? And we say, yes. Be generous and orderly. But but we're talking about a phenomenon where people are going to move to opportunity. Let's figure out how to do it in a way that serves the receiving country that serves the immigrants, and that over time reduces the need to migrate. That arc of migration from root causes to movement to settlement is underappreciated. And that's why I say we're at the beginning of this debate. I think in the next 20, 25 years, we'll have a much more sophisticated understanding, our politicians will have a more sophisticated understanding, and we'll have policy tools that deal with it. We're just at the beginning, but I'm actually optimistic over the long term that we'll have the breakthrough that, you know, it's long overdue in my view, but I think we'll get there.